Okay, so today is actually Friday, November 6th, the day after I bought a 5800X on release. Uh, and I was expecting it to take a while before I could get my machine up and running, but uh, basically I had them put a board on order, but they got a regular stock um, board that just came in today. So they put it off to the side and I got a call, so actually next day I got my motherboard. I was kind of contemplating like ordering on Amazon and cancelling the one that was on order because then we get here Monday, but this actually worked out even better. Uh, it came here today. Um, so I've got everything I need. Um, I figured I may as well just suffer through it now and I got a 1TB NVMe SSD as well. And then my two SATA SSDs will go into a RAID 0 for game library storage and whatnot. Uh, or maybe I'll keep... No, I'll do RAID 0. Um, so that I can have nice, fast storage. Um, and I, I feel like 500 gigs is still probably a little small. Um, so I also have like barely slept at all. I've been up since 5 p.m. yesterday with only like 4 or 5 hours sleep then. Just because I was so excited about this. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, one terabyte NVMe SSD. I have my 5800X. I have my two kits of Crucial Ballistics 3200 megahertz uh, DDR4. This stuff, people have gotten it up to like 4 gigahertz. Um, I'm not... I, so Infinity Fabric in the 5800X is... 2 gigahertz, so 4 gigahertz memory, since it's double data rate, would be like the best option for that. But it's also one of those things where it would be just chasing after like a few percent difference in synthetics. Uh, so it's probably not worth trying to sell these even cheaper than I wanted to, and then spending more money on like the little bit of extra. Same reason why I didn't really go for the 5900X, because... Yeah, you know, and especially now that I'm seeing more benchmarks come out that are sort of like, uh, you know, trading blows for gaming. Um, I think even though this is not great value compared to the others, it's, I mean, well, it is the only option for like the middle spot where it's mostly gaming and then a little bit of creative stuff or something where you might want more through it, of course. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully it's not like they're badly bin trips or something. I might regret this. Who knows? Um, but that's also if I just pay a bunch of attention to it, because again, I'm going from 4770 to this. Uh, so then I actually have the motherboard here, and I already went ahead and I just have my water block loosely mounted on it, but here is the B550M mortar with the EK Quantum Velocity on it. Uh, so I'm going to work on a custom front panel for my case that will replace this weird one with a proprietary connector so that I can have front USB-C, which is why I chose this motherboard, aside from the good VRM cooling and whatnot. Uh, this one has front USB-C, even though the rear I.O. is really pretty shit. Uh, I mean, you know, not much in terms of USB ports. These are USB 2, so there's only, yeah, three Type-A USBs on there, so... I'm gonna be using oh, gonna be using this powered hub uh, for because like my my keyboard takes two ports, my mouse takes one port, wireless headphone adapter takes a port, um, yeah, just a lot. Uh, so it that's really disappointing. I could get like an add-on card, but I don't want to add more airflow restriction. Um, this has 2.5 gigabit LAN, which yeah, not bad, but I have 10 gig fiber. Um, so my GPU is going to come here off the riser, and then my 10 gig LAN is actually going to be right on the bottom. So that might be challenging for cables, but that means that I should have more airflow ease through here. Um, so yeah, and I'm still going to control all my fans and pump and whatnot with my Corsair Commander Pro, uh, just because I can do it on the fly. Uh, Although I am curious like what the RGB lighting effects are in MSI software, how that compares. I don't know, maybe I'll hook up a header. But, yeah, so I've just uh, been on and off running some benchmarks. 
see how things compare before. Uh, so I've done so I've done 3D Mark. I've done Time Spy. Wait, no, 3D Mark is Time Spy. What is it? Shunijin uh, Superposition um, and 3D Mark Time Spy. Uh, Deus Ex. Uh, mankind, no, Human Revolution. Yeah, uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution and uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmarks. Uh, and then the next one that I'm going to do, I could rig up like logging for the frame rate and stuff, but I just don't feel like dealing with it. Um, so I'm going to just take some video with my phone of a little bit of gameplay in Watch Dogs 2. And also Kerbal Space Program. Uh, Watch Dogs 2 should be interesting. I think that's one where I was definitely CPU limited, but it doesn't have a benchmark built in. And Kerbal Space Program, I'm just going to load up like an old big rocket. I haven't played it for quite a while. But I want to see how much of an FPS improvement I get going to this processor, because Kerbal Space Program has always been something that I've struggled to run really nicely, and I don't know if that's an engine limitation or a processing power limitation, so... That should be interesting to see. Okay, so this is something I don't think I showed on my channel. Uh, but to get enough clearance, I did some test fitting. Uh, to get enough clearance for the I.O. shield, uh, I actually trimmed this side section off so the radiator could mount flush and relatively flat. That could definitely be cleaned up more for whatever is hitting on. Uh, but yeah, just to get that extra, like, two millimeters of space, that way the I.O. shield will clear the back side of the radiator, I did that, and my radiator also now properly mounts in with screws instead of 3M tape, uh, because it would always come loose randomly and stuff, and it was just such a pain in the ass. And it was just such a pain in the ass, just when it came loose when I was working on it, or just because the heat warmed up the tape and the glue let go. Now I actually have a nice proper mount and a good seal, so a lot of air comes out here. Uh, that back grill isn't great. I mean, I could, like, try to cut it out and make a better one like I'm designing for the front, but... I really don't know how much more performance that would get me. Uh, and then, yeah, all of my mismatched RAM. Oh yeah, and I still have the super cheap... But actually kind of worked okay and was not the cause of corrosion and weird stuff in my loop. Uh, cheapo block, which I still like the look of these thumb screws better than the textured EK ones. Uh, but yeah, so that's still a good part. That one is definitely a good part. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have use for that. Maybe I'll throw it on eBay or not, something. Or maybe I'll hang on to it. I don't know. Uh might use it at some point. I mean, I do I do want to try and use this board for something. And I don't have an air cooler that mounts to it, so... Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so I had been intending to video more of this. Um, but, yeah, just the mess of wiring and stuff. And I had to sand down some standoffs. And I still need to try and unbend part of it. Uh, but I've got the motherboard fitted in. Um, and the I.O. shield... Lines up really quite nicely. The nice thing about this, it's something I was going to do a show on video, but basically the rear I.O. shield on this thing, it kind of looks like it's built in, but you actually just pop it sideways and you can pull it out. And a standard I.O. shield will actually clip in here. So that's really cool. That's obviously designed so that they can have different configs, but it makes it really nice for case modding. And I also have the front USB, which I'll be replacing, and audio. This is why I vertical mounted my GPU and then went to liquid cooling, because this is the USB 3 connector that goes at a right angle and plugs into that spot there, which is in the way of a dual GPU. So that's going, uh, swapping out for two USB 3 on the front and USB type C. So now supposedly with the BIOS flashback, all I have to do is power it up with that in the BIOS flashback port and then press the button and it should be able to handle it without a CPU or anything. Uh, there's no CPU mounted in there yet and no memory so there should be a red light that flashes 
somewhere when I press that button. So there is no sign of life on that right now. Oh, you know what? That power cable isn't plugged in. Okay, power cable is now plugged in. I still don't see any sign of life on that motherboard. But supposedly, I just press that button. Oh, and it's actually back there. Oh! Ah, uh, so that turned on. It's flashing more, so I supposedly just wait until that's done flashing. Oh yeah, in the meantime, what I can do is... Uh, reverse engineer the pins for this and uh, repin maybe not this connector but uh, a different one actually I probably wouldn't want to repin this one because I don't have this dual side by side I do have single rows though that should be able to take these pins in uh, so I might just glue two single rows of like five together there is a little legend on that JP one there and in the manual so maybe I'll deep in this and start messing around with that in the meantime hey uh, not much later but I heard the power supply click on and off a couple times and the light is off so in theory the BIOS is successfully flashed to the latest version and should support Ryzen 5000 series so I'm gonna work on that front panel connector and then mount the power supply back in, try to straighten these cables up more, and carry on. Um, yeah, making progress. Okay, so I've gone ahead with my multimeter and figured out all the wiring for this. Um, it might be Lenovo standard. Um, it also actually might be sort of standard for front panel I.O., but I haven't done this in quite a while, so... Um, Basically, the power switch. Oh yeah, so I am. The motherboard uses a 10-pin connector with one missing. So I glued a four and a five-pin together uh, to make essentially a key connector. Um, so the black and the white are the power switch. Then the brown is the power LED positive. The blue is the power LED negative. The yellow is the hard drive LED positive, and the green is the hard drive LED negative. Uh, and then there's no reset switch on this one. That would be those next two pins, and then this very last one is not used. So that's some quick and easy progress. And on to more involved things. But that was also kind of like just like a nice quick break. Okay, so now it's time to start loading hardware in. Uh, somewhat awkwardly filming. I'm going to have to like flip the video. Uh, one thing, I really like how these say USB on these headers. That's pretty cool. Um, so unfortunately, there's a little tiny bag with M.2 screws that has vanished, but I think this will retain the M.2 drive. And yeah, I should remove that if it's too long. So I'm only doing the one M.2 drive, so yeah, I don't need the little baggy screws immediately, I don't think. I'm sure they will resurface as I'm cleaning up in the end here. Yeah, this is a nice, like, full length one. So I will take out this. So, yeah, I have a 500 gig one of these in my server. Uh, just as storage for the 10 gig, but, oh, actually, I guess I'm going to flip video. There we go, one terabyte, black, NVMe drive. Oh, man, I mean, I know, like, technology is it's one of those things, but, like, one terabyte, crazy fast, and one terabyte, not great. Uh, and here's another terabyte. I'm not sure how I'm going to mount these yet.
All right, so there's our M.2. Next, we will do what this is all about. The 5800X. I'll have to check the thermal paste application method if it's anything specific. I know some Ryzen stuff is a little different, although that may be because of uh, like thread ripper and stuff having such large dies. I have not done, I was gonna say, I've not done one of those in a long time, but actually, I have messed around with some older stuff long enough that it's not entirely novel. Okay. Super tired and slightly nervous. So there is my 3800X. Okay. All right, I'm gonna quickly check if there's like a particularly great application method for the thermal paste, and I'm gonna use the thermal paste that came with the block. All right, it kind of seems like the X method is good. Mostly, yeah, I guess the processor is like sideways. Okay, those are all about the same mounting pressure. I probably don't want to bore bottom them out. Uh, now is a good chance to show you the radiator clearance. <clears throat> Let's see if it's improved any. Yeah, so I basically got to put it in there and then lift up to flex the metal a bit. Ah, oh, there we go. So that, yeah, it's definitely tilted upwards a little bit. Um, so side panel going on, probably not really going to work. But yeah, this is like all machined in there. I can't really get any more out of there. And so then this tube, let's go, yeah, I don't think I have quite enough tubing, uh, so I might have to reuse some slightly older stuff. I really don't want to scratch the VRM heatsink on this thing. Okay. Yeah, so it's an insanely tight fit. Um, I wish this was lower or a removable plastic plate because then it would fit really nicely. It would be basically perfect. But unfortunately it's not. Uh, so for other components that we'll put in now, we'll go ahead with our 10 gig network card. All right, so our 10 gig networking is now on the bottom and we will have these metal three slots here, all these top three slots here for airflow to come out. So. This might get a bit warmer, we'll see, um, but this should have a bit better airflow for the radiator to come out and that'll help cool this off more. Uh, so I need to glue those in place in the tabs there. We'll go ahead and do our memory now. Uh, this is nice, both sides of this open. I just did some builds with three Asus Tough Gaming motherboards and they had the one side that did not open and I really hated how that felt, putting memory in there. Putting memory in there when the one side is solid, bad heebie-jeebies. Uh, and so yeah, I've decided to just go with the ballistics 3200 megahertz and see how much I can overclock it or lower cast timings on. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be learning about overclocking. That's what's gonna be happening these days, I guess. Uh, now these should probably all be identical. So let me grab the other set. This is one of those things where, yeah, like I'm, I'm not have, I'm not having any luck selling this stuff, obviously, because I have one of these up on eBay. I haven't had any bites at it at all. So it's just going to kind of go to waste probably if I don't sell it. If I lower the price a bunch and then I do sell them, then I still have to pay money for other stuff. Uh, and RGB honestly might be too crowded. Uh, yeah, RGB there might be too crowded because there's going to be RGB there, 
with the G CPU block there and then the fans there uh, or with the GPU block there. So I think black is probably like a nice blend in. So I'm wondering if I want to just put these in matching pairs in the lanes or if it's going to matter. Cast timings. Yeah, so it's... Ooh, yeah, DDR4 3200 with XMP 16, 18, 18 36. These little marks here are identical, it looks like. I'm not seeing any significant difference between them. Uh, and I doubt they bin these like to each other at the factory. That's probably a bit too much. So. No turning back now. It's such a excessive amount of RAM. I have used up full 16 uh, photogrammetry before, doing photogrammetry, but 64 gigs. I have 72 gigs in my server, but um, this is going to kick the snot out of it. This is pretty nice stuff. It seems quite thin. A lot of the RAM you see, I guess, because it's got RGB and stuff, it's quite thick at the top. This is like much narrower, thinner profile. Yeah, I wonder how the RGB stuff would have looked. I don't know if the RGB stuff is much higher. Okay, that is... Honestly, maybe a little anemic looking, but that is... 64 gigabytes of DDR4. Um, yeah. Now, again, I'll say I didn't buy this um, retail price. I got it at auction with a whole bunch of other memory and stuff. I did spend a lot of money on this upgrade process, but I did not go out and also spend $400 on RAM just now. Uh, yeah, that's just stuff that I had kicking around. So... I may as well use it and have a baller ass system with 10 gig networking and whatnot. That's in there. I do need to yeah glue those in place. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put the radiator in, start mucking with tubing a bit more. Oh, transfer these fittings over to the new block. So yeah, I was a little concerned about, uh, we'll see what the radiator in there. I'm a bit concerned with the difference in CPU position. Just with that run from the, um, the radiator to the outlet. You know what? It's not as far off as I thought, actually. Like, the socket is actually in quite a similar alignment. Hang on, let's get that radiator. So this thing honestly like doesn't need to be screwed in with how fucking tight the clearance is. Oh my god. Oh, no, look at that. It's just slightly too short there. Just doesn't reach, and I just don't have enough spare uh, tubing. This run that goes down from behind the radiator and pops into here. I could shorten it a bunch. This tubing is cleaner, but I'm going to try and clean up the tubing that I have. Oh, it just needs, like, another inch. Don't we all? 
Okay, well, I'll work on cleaning up the tubing and stuff, but this is coming along nicely. I still can't power it up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to mount the radiator next after I figure clean out the tubing. And then I'll put the vertical GPU mount in with the riser. And it shouldn't be much more aside from filling and powering it up. Oh, and I have to mount my SSDs as well. I have to figure out if I want to like stack them on top of each other or uh, it's taking the label off. Shit. If I want to stack them on top of each other or have them displayed in a couple spots. Um, the old motherboard powered my Commander Pro and uh, an SSD off of the motherboard because it has... <coughs> Yeah, it has a weird power connector, uh, a 14 pin, uh, so it, it powered the SSDs off of this, and hard drives, but um, <coughs> that's not an option with this board. So I have the, yeah, the SATA cable that came with my power supply, and I have another one of these, I don't know if it's longer, but I might need to cut the cable ties on this and run this one further up. So we'll have to mess around with the placement of that. So yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll get this tubing length done. I'll mount the power supply, do rough cable runs, mount the front radiator, vertical GPU mount, rear radiator. Okay, making progress. So pretty. Uh, that does look pretty sharp, like the all black and stuff. I like the look of the Azrock with the, like the white camo, but this just looks performance. Like this is, I kind of want that black zero maintenance tubing, but I also like this clear isn't good, but I also kind of want to do solid tubing, and then maybe have like this moved in slightly, and have like a solid coming in as a return or something. I don't know. <clears throat> I won't be doing solid tubing until. I upgrade the GPU probably because it's just such a commitment that I want it to be like the final build. The EKZ MT might be tempting, but I also really want to do solid tubing. Okay, sorry, this is getting real long, so. Um, oh god, 20 minutes. Well, I'm going to fast forward. All right. <laughs> 